to a year of Hitchcock movies. We are your hosts, Jeff and Diane, and this is movie number 31, Stage Fright from 1950. After uh, last week's financial disaster under Capricorn, um, we're now uh, seeing Alfred Hitchcock wanting to get into some familiar territory. And, and with Stage Fright, we're, we've also, uh, we're marking the end of the ill-fated Transatlantic Pictures, the production company that was owned by, by Alfred Hitchcock, and we're seeing the beginning of a relationship with Warner Brothers. That's, uh, that's a good thing. But now before we go on, I, I want to comment on our, our shirts. One of our, uh, our viewers uh, who's watching these movies all along with us and, and leaving some great comments, uh, mailed this to us, and uh, we, we, we love them. We think they're great, so uh, that's awesome. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, now, I'm guessing with Alfred Hitchcock that uh, he found out maybe that it was no fun owning your own production company and, uh, and having to be the director and all that sort of thing. So, uh, um, you know, Jack Warner actually won the bidding rights to distribute the two previous movies, Rope and Under Capricorn. Even though it was Hitchcock's production company, it was still Jack Warner and Warner Brothers that was, that was distributing those movies. Well, he, uh, he goes ahead and uh, extends his distribution rights uh, changes the deal so he's now financing the pictures and more importantly he uh, continues to allow Alfred Hitchcock uh, full creative control so creative control over a subject matter over uh, location the writers that he wanted everything the budget the cast uh, you know we're, we're getting the sense that Jack Warner is a smart guy uh, now we've heard this before where Alfred Hitchcock using someone else's money and has total creative control it usually gives us a great movie so we'll see I mentioned uh, Alfred Hitchcock getting to some familiar territory well tonight's film uh, like uh, last week's under Capricorn is, uh, is is completely filmed unlike last week's under Capricorn in England and this is the last film that he will will do in England for 22 years he'll film his second last movie he'll film Frenzy um, in England. Um, that's interesting. So, so here in tonight's movie, he's, uh, he's found a short story he likes called Man Running, also known as Outrun the Constable, uh, written by Selwyn Jepson in 1947. And he, he read the, the short story, but he also read reviews that said this would make a great Hitchcock movie, which is interesting. Now he gets a playwright he likes named Whitfield Cook, and he and Alma set out to, uh, to write the story. And uh, boy, that, that all, they all wrote the story together. That sounds great. We've heard that before, too. So he also brings in two people he likes to work on the dialogue. One was uh, the fellow under the pseudonym James Bridey, and uh, he, he did some dialogue on two previous Hitchcock films. And uh, a fellow by the name of Ranald McDougall, um, he wrote the screenplay of some great films in the 40s. Uh, wow, so far so good. So uh, as for the story idea, Man Running or Outrun the Constable, uh, just very briefly, it's about an acting student, uh, how she, uh, she's got a friend who's been framed for a murder and uh, how she helps him out. And uh, why well, that sounds really good. Maybe there'll be some, some blackmail and some some fake identities and maybe a wrong man theme, who knows, we'll see. So, uh, in addition to uh, creative control, like I mentioned, Alfred Hitchcock pretty much got all the, uh, the actors that he wanted. In particular, uh, he got Jane Wyman, fresh off her Best Actress Oscar for a 1948's Johnny Belinda. A very interesting movie because she wins the Oscar and doesn't have a single line of dialogue in the whole film. Um, and uh, she also was fresh off a divorce from, uh, from Ronald Reagan and apparently was uh, quite happy to have to travel to, uh, <laughs> to England to do this movie. He also gets an actor by the name of Richard Todd. Uh, Richard Todd was just uh, nominated for an Oscar. He didn't win, but for his role in a movie called The Hasty Heart from 1949, a movie starring he and Ronald Reagan. <laughs> And uh, written by one of our uh, writers tonight, uh, Randall McDougall. He did the screenplay for uh, The Hasty Heart, a very good movie. It's, it's very clever. And uh, although he sort of wanted, Hitchcock sort of wanted Tallulah Bankhead for uh, one of the roles tonight, uh, and we all remember her for her fantastic performance in Lifeboat. Boy, was she good in that. The studio offered Marlena Dietrich, and uh, Hitchcock was pretty happy with that. So, so some big names, some big stars. <clears throat> 
Um, also in this film tonight is Michael Wilding. We saw him in last week's Under Capricorn. He was one of the two male leads. He was not Joseph Gotten. He was the other guy. He plays a detective in tonight's movie. Ooh, a, a detective. Maybe a love interest. Um, and lastly, uh, Alistair Sim is in this. He plays the father of Jane Wyman's character. Uh, now, he's best known as Scrooge. If you're thinking of a black and white movie that you love called Scrooge, it's probably him. He's the best known, the best loved version of Scrooge from 1951, the year after this one, Alistair Sim. Now this is Patricia Hitchcock's debut uh, in uh, 1950's Stage Fright, and that's fun. Uh, you know, it's kind of a cameo to look for. She's one of uh, Jane Wyman's characters. Uh, uh, they're, they're studying at the Royal Academy, um, at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, which, which Patricia Hitchcock was actually studying acting at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London at the time. We'll see Patricia again more prominently in next week's Strangers on a Train. She's also in Psycho. So that's really, really fun. Uh, tonight's film, like I said, uh, set in London, has some scenes filmed in uh, the, the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art because Jane Wyman's character is, is she's the, the acting student. She's an acting student studying there. Um, now, it must be pointed out that uh, we're back in Hitchcock's London. We're back in the London that he knew, the London he loved, the London he was comfortable in, and uh, we're going to see some neat uh, British character actors. We're going to see some humor. Um, tonight's movie is actually the last of uh, Alma Reville, his wife, the last of her credited or uncredited uh, screenplay uh, contributions, which is weird because we all know that she's by his side through all these movies, but when you're on IMDb and you're reading all of her credits, both you know where she, she gets credit on the film and uncredited, it dries up pretty much at stage fright. Very interesting. Now look for a Cole Porter song called The Laziest Gal in Town. Uh, that's sung by Marlene Dietrich, who if you don't know, read up on Marlene Dietrich in uh, in Wikipedia. She lived a, a tremendous life. Uh, this song was written for her, for this movie, by Cole Porter, and uh, the song became a, a signature song for uh, the rest of her life. And weirdly, Diane used to sing that song. Uh, it was when you were a child or when you were a teenager or in high school. So uh, imagine her surprise when we were watching this movie and there's Marlene Dietrich singing The Laziest Gal in Town. So uh, now a couple of other things to notice. Uh, when the movie begins, the, the curtain is, is raising as, as the credits come up and there's a curtain raising giving you, you know, notice that uh, you know, this is as if to say, this is not real, this is just a story. Uh, the other thing is there's a cameo to look for, you can't miss it. Um, now also look for all the lighting on Marlene Dietrich. When she, in every scene she was in, she was telling them the lighting, she was telling them the camera angles, she was telling them everything. And, and of course all the people who knew Alfred Hitchcock had been working with him for years, they would run over to him and say, uh, she wants us to change everything, and he would say, do what she says. He, uh, he's a smart man too, he knew what he was doing. So, uh, great. So, uh, on with the film from 1950, Alfred Hitchcock's Stage Fright. Let's go. Let's watch.